Okay, our last topic for PowerPoint 2A is chemical reactions. And chemical reactions occur when chemical bonds are formed, rearranged, or broken. So essentially we're going to be building things, breaking them down, or sorting them. And we're going to represent chemical reactions with chemical equations. In chemical equations, you have reactants and products. The reactants are usually written to the left of an arrow, and the products written to the right. You'll also see that the relative proportions of each and the states of matter are also included in these chemical equations that include the chemical formulas of certain molecules and compounds. So here are some examples of chemical equations. We see that if we add two hydrogens together, we can get hydrogen gas. The reactants are the two separate hydrogen atoms and the product is the hydrogen gas on the right. A lot of chemical equations are reversible, but here we're showing an irreversible reaction, and that's demonstrated by an arrow that only goes to the right. There's also arrows that go to the right and left, and that's saying that the reaction can happen both ways. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed, so all atoms must be accounted for, and so we must have the same number of atoms on the left as we do as the right, so we have to have the same amount of stuff for the reactants as we do for the products. So the three main types of chemical reactions we're going to look at begin with synthesis. This is a building or combination reaction where when we put two things together, we're going to be forming a bond. So you're going to be synthesizing, making something, making something new, which is a new bond formation. These are the type of reactions that involve atoms or molecules combining to become much larger complex molecules. Or said another way, it's the way that monomers, things like amino acids, could come together to build a protein. These are building or anabolic processes. The way to remember that building processes are anabolic is to think about ants and the ant beds that they build. The homes they build require energy, and anabolic or building processes also require energy to be put into the reaction in order for it to occur. So here is that example I was talking about, synthesis reactions. The example is amino acids, which are the monomers of protein, coming together in order to build a large macromolecule. So proteins are an example of a macromolecule in food. The opposite of synthesis reactions are decomposition. That's where we break down or take things apart. We break a bond. It's going to involve the breakdown of a molecule into smaller molecules, so maybe a protein back into its amino acids. These types of reactions are also termed catabolic. Think of if you leave a cat in a room all by itself. It's going to get into stuff. It's going to maybe even destroy things. So catabolic reactions are destructive. They're degradative. We're going to break bonds. We're also going to release energy, though, when we use decomposition reactions because the breaking of bonds releases energy. The breaking of the terminal third phosphate from ATP is also an example of a decomposition reaction. Here we have the example of glycogen is broken down to release glucose molecules. Glycogen is a short-term energy storage molecule found in humans and other animals. It can be broken down into its subunits, which are glucose molecules, for readily available sugar in the blood, which is given to cells. Some other patterns that we'll see in chemical reactions are exchange or displacement reactions. This is basically a reaction where we're going to sort things around. So you can see that bonds are made and broken in the two examples. In that first example, we have AB become AC, and we're breaking the bond between AB, and so B is going to be separate as a product. In the second reaction, we're breaking two bonds between AB and CD, and forming two new bonds between AD and CB. The positive ion would always be written first, so for example, sodium chloride, if we were using that, we would write sodium before chloride because sodium is the cation or the positive ion in the combination of sodium and chloride, whereas chloride would be the anion. Here's an example of an exchange reaction. Now, just the breaking of ATP would be a decomposition reaction, but when we group it with the oxidation of glucose, it becomes an exchange reaction whereby we break off the terminal phosphate from ATP or adenosine triphosphate and add it onto oxygen. So that would be a displacement reaction, which is also known as an exchange reaction. So in general, some of the terms we were using are catabolic and anabolic. And we said that catabolic reactions release energy. That means they're also exergonic because catabolic reactions are degradative, they're destructive, they break bonds, 
but in doing so, they're useful because they release energy. And exergonic reactions are reactions that result in a net release of energy. Therefore, the reaction is going to yield products that have less energy because we've released energy and it's being used up than the initial reactions. Whereas anabolic reactions are building reactions, they're synthesis reactions. And they're a way for us to store energy. That means they absorb it or use energy in making the bond. And that means that they're also endergonic, which are reactions that result in a net absorption of energy. So all chemical reactions are theoretically reversible. Thus far, we haven't really been looking at that. But a more common way to write arrows are not just one arrow all the way to the right from reactants to products, but to write them as a chemical equilibrium, wherein the arrow points both ways and that as long as conditions are favorable, it could go one way or the other. And while many biological reactions are reversible, like we just talked about, a lot of times we don't have the right products or the right reactants available in order for the reactant reaction to truly be reversible. So energy requirements to go backward are usually too high. And a lot of times there's enzymes specifically present for chemical reactions to proceed only one way. So in summary, we have catabolic reactions, which are also known as decomposition reactions, which are degradative, they break bonds. So since they're involved in breaking bonds, they're also associated with hydrolysis reactions. Hydrolysis can be broken down into hydrolysis, which is a breakdown process involving water. So by adding water to a reaction, which is an oxidative reaction, we can break bonds. By breaking bonds, we also release energy. That means these are also exergonic reactions, and oftentimes heat will be released as a byproduct, but that's a form of energy. Anabolic reactions are the opposite. They're building reactions. We build or make bonds, so they're combination or synthesis reactions. Since they're involved in making bonds, they use dehydration synthesis, which means that the reaction is going to lose water in order to create a bond, and by making a bond, they're going to absorb surrounding energy to store it, a great example is the building or making of ATP from either adenosine mono or diphosphate. So make sure that you can recognize terms like catabolic, decomposition, and exergonic go together, and words like anabolic, dehydration synthesis, and endergonic go together, and be familiar with the terms. And last but not least, we're going to look at how reaction rates are affected by the following. Temperature, particle size, concentration of reactant, and the presence of a catalyst. Those are all four things that can affect reaction rate. If you increase temperature, you increase the movement of molecules, which means you increase the likelihood that they're going to bump into each other and therefore react, so you increase reaction rate. If you decrease particle size, you make the particles smaller, therefore they don't weigh as much and it's easier for them to move and move faster. If they move faster, they're more likely to bump into each other, which means they're more likely to react, and that increases reaction rate. If you increase the concentration of a reactant, that means there's more of that substance. And that means the substances that are the reactants are more likely to bump into each other, therefore react and produce products, so that increases the reaction rate. And catalysts are another name for enzymes. So enzymes are biological catalysts, and their goal is to speed up chemical reactions. And we can speed up chemical reactions by basically making the environment favorable for the reactants to react. And that means that the use or the presence of a catalyst is likely to increase the rate of a reaction without actually being chemically changed itself. Enzymes work and then can work again. They're not broken after working just one time. And that's it for part 2A of the chemistry chapter. So make sure you stay tuned next week for part 2B.